Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who Fanatics to a review of, finally, the 4th Doctor Novel Adaptions Volume 1 release, which is two Virgin Missing Adventures, which are The Romance of Crime and The English Way of Death by Gareth Roberts, which is starring Tom Baker as the 4th Doctor, Lala Ward as Romana 2, and John Leeson as K-9 Limited Special Edition release. You speak casually for a man about to die. About to die, I hope not. Lots of interesting things I haven't got round to yet. Now for this video, I'm actually not going to be showing you how it is presented because I've already done that in the unboxing video. So if you want to see how it is presented, click down below. There will be a link in the description. It will take you to the unboxing video. But if you don't really want to see how it's presented, you want to go straight to the review, then don't do anything. So let's start my review of this set. And both these stories are, as I said, from the Virgin Missing Adventures line. And chronologically, they are after the Creature from the Pit and before Nightmare of Eden in Season 17. So, let's start my review, starting with The Romance of Crime. Have arrived. Your associates? They are your associates? Seemingly so. You recognize them? I'm very much afraid I do. Mistress, shall we kill this one? Oh, Grons. No. Romance of Crime is a very well-loved, praised to be one of the best ever from Gareth Roberts, which I thought, well, but I have read the book and I gotta say it's absolutely astonishing, the, the content in it is just absolutely brilliant, but the adaption, you know, they've changed quite a bit of it, so I can definitely can compare it to the book to this, so that'll be very good and very strong to do this review of the Romance of the Crime. Now, the Romance of Crime, it's set in a location which is called the Rock of Judgment, which is a place built of court and execution, so it doesn't really sound like the nicest place in the world, doesn't it? So yes, uh, the Doctor and Romana and K-9 land on the Rock of Judgment, and so they see some very odd stuff happening around the station, also with very gruesome murders as well. And of course, the Doctor and Romana have to seek answers to find out who's committing these murders and why. So yeah, it starts off pretty simple it does the romance of crime but as it gradually gets along it does start to throw things a lot at you that the main enemy actually has it's not just the ogrons to see in the story but it's a it's a lot more than that it actually throws you quite a lot of stuff in this story and especially when it gets to the second half it a lot does happen and part four it does become very compacted and the story goes overflown with stuff i gotta say i'm gonna go in depth part by part, starting with part one, which was, to be honest, actually spot on. I absolutely loved it with the introduction of the Rock of Judgment and all the characters in there, such as Pierpoint, Stokes, and Frank Spirit, and Margot. So an introduction of all the characters in the station. So yeah, it's a very nice introduction with all the characters and also this mystery of the odd stuff happening in the Rock of Judgment and these murders and then you you know who it is really because the cliffhanger of part one tells you that anyway and it's linked to this uh, mask it is which margot sees and it, it like manipulates her mind it's a very powerful entity in that mind which is zeus who is a a very powerful entity but and a very powerful villain but i'll get to a villain in a minute so i'm just going part by part and then i'll go to the characters so yeah, part one absolutely brilliant uh, I know they've calmed down the violence a little bit in this because there was some gory stuff in the book. To part two, again, just like part one, absolutely brilliant. And the Ogrons do get introduced halfway through this story, which is a great and on original transmission. That would probably have been the most surprising moments to ever see the Ogrons because we've known the Ogrons from Pertwee's era and they've only appeared twice and they've only appeared twice in book form. The Romance of Crime. And some other BBC book, which I cannot remember what it's called. So yeah, the Ogons, I think they get introduced uh, actually at the right time, really. I think part one would be too too early for them if they went for part one's cliffhanger. I think that would be too early. Uh, part one, I mean, that's where they introduced the, the actual main enemy of the story. That's what they were trying to do. And then part two, they were going to get the other guys in, which Isaias is working with, which I do not like. It's not the Ogons, but it's the, the criminals, which are... I, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it, and I'll get to those in a minute, because they do something in the story which oh, I don't like. Yeah, part 3 and part 4, this is where the story turns tables, and it starts to throw 
quite a bit at the listener. Quite a few stuff happens, especially in part four. But I'm not talking about part four. Part three is where the Ogons really get into action and it's a bit of a massacre. I mean, in the real book, they did some gory stuff they did. And it was cut it down. Uh, Ogrons beat the crap out of people and really did some nasty stuff. But in this, they were used a bit as a joke. They were they were used pretty much for comedy in this, really. Nothing too bloody and gory. But I wish they did have some of that because we would have seen another side of the Ogrons that they would have been. And actually, a monster which you do not want to mess with when you see him right in front of your eyes. But... Yeah, they were used not to their full advantage, which was a bloody shame, that was. I was expecting them to cause some real damage, but... Um, no, not really. And of course, the criminals as well. We learn that they want to do something with an upcoming planet, which is uh, right by there. They want to grab some sort of resource. No, part four is where... Uh, I wish part four never happened, to be honest, because this is where it got a little bit rushed and they didn't really think it through that well. Oh, they just thrown absolutely everything at you. We find out one of the characters is actually a traitor. We hear about the criminals doing their thing. Zeus is doing her own thing. Something happens to her. The Ogrons are... It goes topsy-turvy. It throws so much at the listener. It's actually crazy it is. It's too much at you. And they didn't think about spreading it apart. They just go BAM! Throw it all at your face. And they just did all that in part 4. But yeah, I did not like that. Part 4 was so chock-a-block of things going on. It was absolutely nightmarish. And I bet some listeners would probably forget some things in that and think you have to rewind it. Yeah, I did miss something I did. And I needed to go back and find it. But something, one of the characters was... I still can't picture it, but one of the characters was an ally. But then he just turned into an enemy. And I don't know why. Maybe I missed something, but he just went to an antagonist for some reason right at the end and I thought what where was this coming from it just seems a bit random Zeus was like pretty much not the only antagonist and there was so much going on which is an absolute shame but anyway let's get to the characters of the story we have Tom Baker as the doctor absolutely fantastic has some brilliant lies between Romana yeah Tom Baker you know he always does fantastic he puts so much energy and enthusiasm into the story gets some good lines in this as well with Romana I can tell both of them just enjoy recording it so that's a really good thing that is and I'm definitely looking forward to season 5 and 6 with these two Romana again absolutely brilliant talking about the academy as well yeah I really like Romana in this story I'm not like the a huge fan of Romana too in the TV series, but to be honest, I really liked it in both these stories. So, yeah, I think Romana 2 has got a, a bit of a boost on me, actually. I think she's great with Tom Baker. And K-9. A K-9 actually quite does quite a lot to do in this set, which is great for K-9 fans. Especially in the English word of death, which I obviously won't say because I'm not on the English word of death yet. But yeah, I like K-9 in the English word of death. has a, a very good purpose in that story. Well, something happens to him, but again, I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, Romance of Crime, he was good, but in English Word Death, he was a lot better. So we have Granum Seed, who was Pierpoint. Now, I don't know, he sounds a lot like Mr. Fibberly from the Pirate Planet, but uh, I don't think it is, but it just sounds so much like him. But yeah, Pierpoint, he's a, a good character. I did probably one of my favourite supporting characters, and something changes with his character, it does, which I will not say, but didn't seem coming, which I still wasn't a fan of because I still think it was out of the out of the dark. Really, it felt totally random, and I don't know why they did it. Well, I can't say it because it was spoiler of what why he his character changed for some reason because it will spoil it. But I think it wasn't needed. Now we have Miranda Rayson who played Margot, who didn't actually have too much in the story because she was manipulated by Zayas, which was the mask which was attached to her. And, you know, a normal villain, she hates humanity, she wants to destroy it all and grab all the power in the universe. Pretty much something like that, but she was really good to start with, really threatening, especially at part one's cliffhanger. But where she introduced her, her party, not just the Ogrons, it was nothing to do with the Ogrons, but it was with these criminals, which I thought... Oh, when I heard them, I thought, oh, whoa, what are they doing here? 
the criminals were talking down to Zeus. I thought, what? How can you let that happen? And her character felt weak and powerless against her own party. Come on, if Zeus like literally punched one of the criminals and talked down to him saying, you do not dare to find me, that would have been absolutely brilliant and the criminals were like Zeus's slaves but and doing her own commands but no the criminals talked down to her and I thought oh what a waste of a good villain she's nothing good now that was so disappointing that was and it made her character that villain not very good powerless and pretty damn weak I've just gone over the criminals again they played their parts well but I just didn't like their characters they did talking down to Zeus making her character look weak I think the criminals were totally not even you need to be used and their resources so that subplot about those criminals didn't need to be done I wish it was this Zeus and the Ogrons that's it not these criminals I think they're totally just useless and just made the actual villain in the story crap now we have James Joyce and John Dorney who played the Ogrons which were absolutely brilliant Again, I didn't like what they did, their purpose, but still, the dialogue was brilliant and they were funny. I mean, John Dorney actually does a lot of voice acting and he's actually very good at it. Marcus Garvey, who played Frank Spigot, who was, I believe, the one who, who captured the mask. Zeus was destroyed, but she didn't exist. A good character, sort of forgettable in my opinion, but he's still good. But the most forgettable one was Michael Troughton's character, was Stokes. To be honest, nothing fantastic I wasn't overly wowed by him so yeah that was rather disappointing from Troughton. John Dorney and James Joyce definitely did the ones but the overall person who has the best would probably say the, do the doctor Tom Baker he did the best he was fantastic he was so yeah he goes he gets the credit for the best now to my overall conclusion the romance of crime it is a very good story which starts it off very well by introducing the main villain and starting off the story very well on the first disc but when it gets to the second disc the story adds more additions which I would say I'm not really a big fan of because the criminals made the actual villain look very weak into the story and not very good and also part 4 throwed so many different things going on it felt really compacted so the romance of crime is definitely not a solid story in my books she the action of the Ogrons was limited and they weren't used for their full potential by breaking bones and destroying people to death they were just usually fighting their guns I thought Romance of the Crime would have been the best story out of the two but I haven't said anything about English Way of Death yet so the Romance of Crime it started off good but they did things which I wasn't really a big fan of they removed things which I was a fan of and part 4 was so compacted and I didn't really enjoy part 4 whatsoever. Part 3 was good, but part 4 just made it sink for me. It caused by somebody or something alien to this time continuum. Going to destroy the world next Tuesday. How vulgar. Nobody does anything of importance on a Tuesday. The quicker we reach whopping, the better. Now the overall premise of The English Way of Death, it sets in 1930s. London where the Doctor and Lumana have overdue library books so they decided to return them back after a while. But then when they land in London is a form of green mist which is called Radnium and Radnium does not exist in this universe so it makes the Doctor and Lumana think how did it get there? So it's uh, quite a mystery it is. And they find out but this green mist can possess people and change them and it can suffocate you. So you can basically talk about it. It's similar to the eminence just a little bit. So yes, they've got to find out where this source of radnium is uh, coming from. And to be honest, from there, the story just gets better and it gets more stronger. A bit like Romance of the Crime, but that did it a, a lot more heavy. So we can just go part by part as I did before. Part one of... The English Way of Death, smooth, subtle, or introducing us to the characters, which is, it's very quirky, this story, which I really do like. It reminds me of the City of Death on another scale, but with darker humour. I call it the City of Death 2.0, I do. So yeah, part one, we get introduced to the characters very easily, and the form of the radnium gas, which gives it a rather dim atmosphere, and very 
quiet and open space where everyone around them is these dead zombies. But this story definitely starts kicking off when it gets to where we see some of the characters infected by the Ragnum gas, such as Derek Carly, who played Orlik, who is absolutely fantastic. I do love his voice in it. You can picture it so easy. It's probably why I do love the story a lot. It's so easy to picture, and I picture it throughout the start of part one all the way to part four. It was just an absolutely romp, it was. Yeah, a lot more easier to pick up than the romance of crime because, you know, there's so much going on. My mind was thinking, oh, my head's hurting, but English word death, it does it on a nice scale, a nice simple scale. And in part three and four, it is survival, it is. We see all these zombies. London is filled with these zombie creatures infected by the gas. So it feels like a zombie takeover. And then the enemy of the story, who is played in by Stackhouse, wants to send this gas all around the world so this plague can infect every living being, which uh, just sounds absolutely brilliant. So now we can go over the characters of the story. We have the Doctor, played by Tom Baker. Quirky, fun, and just absolutely enjoyable. And he really does suits in the area and you know this is I can tell Tom really enjoys this one also on the behind the scenes disc you can tell he enjoys it a lot and then we have Lala Ward as Romana and you could say they're split it up from each other quite a lot the doctor's doing one thing and Romana is out doing another thing so they are right quite separate from the story which are it's a little bit of a nap for me personally now John Leeson as K9 the doctor where he says get back in your basket yeah, some funny dialogue between the two, which I, I absolutely love. And also, something happens to K9 in this story, which uh, I would not say, but... Yeah, it's quite interesting. And somehow K9 becomes a little bit sinister, the way he talks. So, you know, something quite big happens to K9 in this story. And I'll leave that all to you. Now, we have the supporting characters with Stackhouse, who was, I would say, the main enemy of this story. And the one running the radnium gas around... A much more better villain, or I compare it to Zeus from Romance of Crime, and is Derek Charlie who played the character Orlick. He played like a zombie, absolutely fantastic, shouting brains. Absolutely brilliant. I wish I would see more of it, but he wasn't really centred too much on the story, but he was absolutely fantastic. I just wish I had more from his character and his dialogue, because he was utterly marvellous. He probably would be my favourite supporting character, because I just love it when he says brains. It's brilliant. Richard Brain as Percy Cloak is a very quirky character with the thin moustache and the glasses. I can picture him so well. Again, that's why I like English Way of Death, because I can picture the characters so well, because they all have something unique with each character in the story. Rather, Romance was not really good on that, but English does. Again, a very quirky character. He looks quirky, acts quirky. Again, he played it fantastic. So Mark Bonner is in the story playing as Porteus, I believe that's his name. He's not really a memorable character, but still, he played it very good. He's a very good voice actor, he is. He's done some fantastic roles. And the next person who was my favourite supporting character, which is Colonel Radlett. He was brilliant. He was my favourite supporting character. He had some good moments with Lala Ward as Romana. And the rest, I thought, were not, not as good as the other ones I've just stated. But yeah, the sporting characters were quirky, they were fun, really imaginative, and you can picture them really well. My favourite sporting character, as I said, was Colonel Radlett, a brilliant character. I would probably give him one of the most top performances with Tom Baker and K-9. Just out of this world, just brilliant, those three. I can't really pick an overall winner, but yeah, Tom Baker, John Leeson, and Tim Benedict did uh, the top role absolutely. Now overall The English Way of Death is a quirky, fun but very dark humoured story with gas surrounding the whole of London with zombies walking around. City of Death 2.0, what I see it personally like that, I think it's a great story. It starts a little slow but then it gets there straight away and the plot becomes just absolutely fantastic. And English Way of Death Personally, it's better than the Romance of Crime because it was dealt with much more better. And I'll give it a 9 out of 10. A really strong story it is. I absolutely loved it. I have, I've I've never read the book for about it before, but so I was going for it completely blind. And personally, English Way Death feels like a more of a Tom Baker story than the Romance of Crime. That's my personal opinion. I think English just wins it for me. It's just a cracker for Tom Baker. 
and for John Leeson as K9 as well. So thank you very much for watching the review of this brilliant scent, the special edition, because the thing is just snazzy as hell. So yes, thank you very much for watching the review of the Fourth Doctor novel adaptions. Of course, the, these are scheduled out, so there'll be a video every day. So the next one coming out tomorrow is the review of Equilibrium. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.